if you're suffering from rheumatoid arthritis and searching for ways to cure it, I'm able to suggest that you may consider trying a different approach. Now, in here, I'm not trying to sell you any magic pills, herbs, or supplements. However, my method may be able to help you to stop the further degeneration of your joints. It's not going to reverse what you already have, but you may be able to stop um, the condition from progressing further. If you wish to reverse the condition, then you will need to consider traditional treatments such as acupuncture and improving your body's qi circulation using qigong exercises. Now, this will be based on my own experience in successfully reversing my rapid onset of rheumatoid arthritis. I did it by researching the mind-body connection and identifying with the emotions and limiting beliefs that trigger this condition, and I proceed to change it. And I could see results within a few days. Basically, the inflammation stopped and... The inflammation stopped and essentially my immune system stopped attacking my joints. Through my research and through my own experience I re and observation of some of the people I know, I came to see that there could be a few emotional factors that may make one become susceptible to developing rheumatoid arthritis. I have included some situation examples. What you may experience may be different, but I hope you may be able to relate to the examples that I have provided. Number one, not setting he healthy boundaries. You may have problems saying no to something because um, there is a desire to please or because we did not want you to know want to appear rude, not helpful or mean. Now, sometimes people may ask, may not even ask you to do certain things. You may voluntarily offer your service and end up finding that you're having too much on your plate. The second characteristic is um, viewing responsibilities as a burden instead of just mere responsibility. Now, this, is, uh, this condition may come from childhood. We may develop a need to please people um, or having made us to assume responsibility that are not age appropriate. For example, parents, our parents may constantly argue and one or two of them may come to complain to us and we we'll end up always being like a surrogate parent. And that is when we are still a child. For example, we have to learn to cope or take care of our younger siblings before we are probably even 10 years old or even in our early teens. At the point where we should, we should be out playing. So this causes a person to grow up getting, um, they are used to caring for people. And in essentially, we are growing up quicker than we need to be. And deep down, sometimes we feel very tired. Our heart feels very tired because we're used to having responsibility from a young age, which we really were not emotionally and mentally equipped to. So at times, even though we find that it is just a... So it comes to such a habit that even though things are just a simple chore, we feel our heart is being burdened. The third factor is self-directed anger and resentment. When we do things and we feel burdened by it, sometimes our resentment can build up. On the other hand, if we don't do, we may also start to hate ourselves. So if we hate ourselves for not being able to, we may hate ourselves for not being able to say no. Number four is untreated anxiety. Anxiety. One of the reasons why we tend to agree to things or do not set boundaries could be due to anxiety. 
For example, we may worry too much that we, if we don't do certain things, certain bad things may happen or people is not going to like us, etc. Now, I wish to bring these points together by sharing with you my own personal story. Earlier this year, I started developing a rapid onset of rheumatoid arthritis. Initially, the pain started on the joint, um, the joints of two joints on my right hand before spreading to my left hand. When it started to spread to my toes, that was when I really, really pay attention. My joints started swelling. Um, with the pain, it started swelling. That's why it's a very telling sign of rheumatoid and that uh, on my index and middle finger. Then the whole thing spread to my right, left hand. And within two months, I had it, the pain on, and the swelling on all my 10 fingers. If accidentally I knock on something, even though lightly, it is very painful. You know things that people take for granted, for example, like making a fist using your fingers. I could no longer do it. To bend my joints and to make it into a fist became too painful. So at first I tried treating it by following the advice of my friend to change my diet and going for acupuncture. And the acupuncture symptoms, the acupuncture treatment really helped to relieve the symptom, but only for a short period. You you have to keep doing acupuncture treatment, but it does help to uh, relieve the pain because it will actually um, clear some meridian blockages. But then after a while, when I if when if I don't go for the treatment, I notice that my finger become more painful. Slowly, slowly, it was becoming more painful because my condition was deteriorating. I due to this, I start reading, start asking around, and then I've been told by healers, by doctors that even until today, there's no prescribed medication that is able to cure rheumatoid arthritis. The only thing you can do is to control control the, the inflammation and basically the medication are steroid based. So with steroid, there is also side effects when you take steroids. I always remember my mom used to tell me that it will eventually suppress your system. So I searched for on the mind body connection and then I came in I it was then I discovered the work of um Dr. Gabo Mate, a physician who is actually based in Canada. And I really recommend um he, that you listen to his talks and also um his book to actually take a look um to read his book called When the Body Says No. Now, feeling burdened by responsibilities. Dr. Gabo mentioned that um, burden and responsibility is a totally different thing. This is something uh, I noticed uh, people having rheumatoid arthritis face, whereby they actually look burdened, that the responsibility becomes a burden because due to the fact that perhaps their whole life they have been carrying a lot of responsibility. But Dr. Gabo mentioned one thing that is very profound, that the attitude we take is very important and responsibility would not cause us illness. But feeling burdened by those responsibilities would. You see, I can relate to big based on my own experience, because about two years ago, more than two years ago, I resigned from my corporate job to become a full-time caregiver. There are many things I have to give up when I make the decision. It was not easy, like having a lot of ample spending money, having freedom, be able to afford things that I want. And furthermore, it is also not easy to care for a person who have Alzheimer's. Now, end of last year, we moved to a new place and then there was a change in environment and it made, the change made me felt, feel more restricted. Then, 
my mom also had some initial behavioral challenges, and which the whole experience made me felt I felt basically we were overwhelmed, burdened, stifled, suffocated. And then I start having some resentment because when you will know that as a caregiver, sometimes nobody else wants your job, you know. So basically, you're on your own caring、um, for the person. And up to a certain stage, you feel I start feeling overwhelmed, underappreciated, and then I find that I have some, I had problem controlling my temper. Sometimes I sometimes I lo- lost. Sometimes because I'm impulsive, I lose my temper on my mom, and then I feel very bad about it later on. I hate myself about it、um, after losing the temper. The one good thing about caring with a person with Alzheimer is that、um, about ten minutes later they will forget. You know, they will forget the outburst and what happened. So after within a short period, I find that the the resentment, the anger, and then the fact that I I'm also always feeling um feel I try to make myself do more than I was willing to do. Inside, I felt very tired, but outside, I'm I'm actually pushing myself to do more and more work. So as a result of that, I I actually start. The the pain started, the swelling started, and the fact that because it started on the fingers, and it's also something you see, the fingers are what we use to the hand is what we use to do to do work. So I kind of figured that it's related to、uh, my role in caregiving, and it it was、uh, it was related to anger and related to caregiving. Initially, I didn't know what should I do. I mean, should I just give up everything, send my mom to a home, or go back to corporate life? And then I, you know, you we I go through some turmoil. Ask myself, am I wasting my time, my talent? And then I got some time to think about it, and I realized that actually I do love my mom very much. I really wanted to care for her myself. You know, there are a lot of horror stories that happen in nursing home that. Happen if you get a maid and things like that. So, I, I thought that I would prefer to do the job myself. Oh,、uh, what you hear in the background is my mum yawning. She basically doesn't bother, you know. Even though I'm recording this, <laughs> she's happy go lucky. The one thing that the blessing of caregiving it has given me the time and opportunity to research and to start my health blog again. So, as my symptoms were getting worse, I decided I have to do something about it. It's a shot, it's a try. Because when you go to check on videos on YouTube, nobody ever mentioned. People are always talking about diet or take medications and all this. For me, I I I try to experiment, changing my emotions, trying to because. Of the pain, it forced me to do something about it. I had no choice. You know, it's either it gets worse, or I I take medication, or it's a long shot, but it's worth a try. I didn't want to my fingers to lose the function doing things that I love the most. You know, like typing, like、um, be able to type, be able to drive. So I made myself change my paradigm. Because of this,、um, what Doctor Gabo say about about res- you have to differentiate between responsibility and burden seriously. So I found that I I always view work as a burden, and from the mindfulness practice that I had, even though it was a on and off a, a slacking kind of thing, I kept saying to myself, "It is work, so don't feel burdened by everything." I did all the caregiving responsibilities I had to do, like make sure my mom get her meals, I feed her medication, take her out for a short walk, bathe and clean her. But on other tasks, for example, if I don't feel like doing the housework, I don't feel like clearing the dishes or mopping the floor for that day. 
I don't do it. During the beginning, I, I didn't do it because I was trying to heal myself, so I stopped doing it. I realized that in the past, I, I do a lot of things that I didn't want to do because I worry that if I don't do, then what other people is going to say. But this time, I told, the hands are getting worse, so I told myself, take a rest. So I slept and I rested. Aside from doing caregiving duty, I did nothing. I slept and I rested. And through this, I also re I also spent the time to reflect and I realized that the burden feeling that people always feel is always due to childhood conditioning. It's common, it happens a lot when in, in children that have to grow up faster than they had to and start to assume roles as adults from a young age, you know. The desire to help and please and putting the needs of others ahead of oneself which in long term will create the feeling of being burdened and also inner resentment. So with some a bit of support from understanding from my teacher and friends, I feel better and more positive. So I change, I keep changing. I, I had to program myself to tell myself to stop looking at daily tasks as burden. So within about a few days, I resumed doing my household duties without any without the negativity and if I really don't feel I'm up to it that day to do work I stop aside from caregiving caregiving I can't because I'm the primary caregiver and to my surprise to my surprise when I start setting boundaries on myself the information stop meaning that I already had a bit of swelling. It didn't reverse itself. But the inflammation stopped because I would know that I uh, the inflammation happens when the immune system attacks the joints. You know. Within a few days of change in mindset, change in attitude, I found the inflammation just stopped. And I could make my fingers into a fist. At first, it was a little uncomfortable, um, but... After a while, it was no longer painful. And then, I, even though if I accidentally knock on something, I didn't feel like the excreting pain that I felt before. I realized that if we do not set boundary, it's going to cause our immune system to lose the ability to differentiate. Because if we don't set boundary in our real life, then... Are basically, we are telling our body that uh, you know anything will do. Uh, that it loses its ability to differentiate what is right from wrong. So, the body, ex the body, the immune system attacks the body. So this is, this will cause autoimmune diseases. Either it attacks the body like this, or it does not fight off or kill off what it needs. That is like which cause cancer. And just to test out this, um, this thing, I actually experimented with my diet. I actually started drinking, um, eating food that previously caused me inflammation, like taking an ice cold or Pepsi, um, eating seafood and chicken meat, which I had actually avoided. And to my surprise... I didn't, the, 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 the information is not there, the pain is not there. It has a little bit of effect, but it's just very minimal. And I find that I could still knock my, if I accidentally knock on my jaw and surface, it won't feel that painful. So the conclusion I get is that the mind-body factor plays a larger role than diet. Why I want to talk about this is I hope that okay now if you are being diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis why not just give my suggestion for approach it from a mind body connection give my suggestion a try and um, give my suggestion a try and try to look at things from a different point of view while we allow you may go um, please do continue to see your doctor for, for treatment and healing. But 
On the other part, the doctor can only heal your body. The doctor would not be able to heal your mind and emotions. So why not you give it a try? There's nothing much to lose. And the best part is I found that through my journey to this journey of uh, relieving my symptoms, I realized that actually I had anxiety as well without knowing. How I realized this is after I changed, I set boundary and then I um, I allowed myself to actually um, don't take things so seriously, don't worry so much about what other people think when I fail to get things done. I find that it was very strange that I noticed when I start driving, I no longer feel... I didn't even know I had anxiety when I was driving all along, but you will feel the difference when you're driving and you no longer become very anxious of the surrounding, like maybe a motorbike will start cutting out and stuff like that. Mm. So there will be positive changes in the life if you give it a try, if you consider giving things a try. That's all. And again, apologies for the little of the background sound. It's my uh, lovely mother yawning. She likes to yawn like a baby. Um, so I um, wish you all the best in overcoming this illness. I sincerely wish with all my heart that you know you will be able to overcome this from letting rheumatoid arthritis affect your daily life. Thank you.